Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another episode of Porn Star Confessions. Today I've got Rocky Barta, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Hi, Jason. I said it right, right? Yeah, you got it right. Okay, all right, good. So, how how long have you been in the industry for now? Uh, I started in 2018. Uh, I filmed my first scene in 2018. Uh, it came out on November uh, that same year, and then the second one came out on January the second year. I didn't really record much until the summer after that, and then gotcha. they just um, they just kept giving me work, and <laughs> that was great. And I actually started by accident. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so how did you get into the industry? Like, did you plan it out or is it like accident you fell into? I sort of fell into it believing it wasn't going to get far because, you know, I when when I started, I actually didn't really watch porn. So, because, you know, I was getting laid a lot. Like, why watch porn when you can just go have sex? <laughs> and um, and I was with a guy. I was, uh, we were, I was in a relationship with a guy. We were living together. Had to kick him out. Uh, ended up uh, having to live alone. And um, I realized I didn't make enough money to afford living alone. So I applied to a local website and uh, sent my photos and uh, they emailed me back and they were like, hey, can you come for an interview? And um, I showed up, it seemed pretty neat. And they sent me to do some testing. And a couple of weeks after I was uh, shooting a scene with uh, William C. Which was a food fetish scene, by the way. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's just money, basically. You need money. I, yeah, I needed money. Um, I didn't know he was that famous, and uh, I thought it was going to be just a drop of water in the ocean of porn, and um, it ended up being like a porn hub everywhere. And my friends started like messaging me, "Hey, I saw you on an ad." I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> but like, thank God it clicked. <laughs> What was that like, though? Like getting those messages and stuff from your friends, like, "Oh, I just saw you." Um, I was not ashamed. I was just like surprised he got that far, because I, for real, I really didn't watch porn. Now I do check it out for work to know what's what, but I really uh, like. I didn't think anybody would notice, and uh, it happened. <laughs> But um, it was interesting. Like some people that had never even talked to me like for like years just messaged me like, oh, I saw you fuck, having sex with this guy. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. <laughs> so do your parents know now what you do? Um, I don't know. Actually, um, when I came out, my parents stopped talking to me. So I oh, okay. don't know. But like, I'm sure that if she finds out, she's going to like think it's also her fault. <laughs> So yeah. how old are you now? I am 38. 38, okay. When did you first come out? Uh, I came out when I was 30 because I knew they were going to react like that. So, like, I wanted to be, like, fully settled and, like, know that everything, like, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get kicked out of my house and be homeless just because I like dick. So, like, I, I played it cool. I was in the closet for quite a while, and uh, I fooled everyone. <laughs> Even my parents, they were really surprised. Um uh, and uh, I knew how it was going to happen, so I uh, like I wasn't even surprised. But uh, it I did wait that long because I knew that's how it was going to end up. And because they're really Catholic, so it's, it's hard to make them understand. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just sad though that that level that that still exists. Like you would think society would have progressed. One would think, um, and I mean, lately the Catholic Church, had, like they're running out of people to scam, so they're starting to be more accepting. And they like, basically their vision recently is, listen, being gay is a burden that God puts on you to test you. Um, it's okay. Just don't fuck me. <laughs> and we'll like you. Cool. And the, a life of sexual frustration sounds a little bit harsh. So, so it's a burden that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know how God like, likes to test his uh, strongest warriors? So he gives them hardship. So their, 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 uh, their rebranding of the situation is 
oh, it is like a test that God puts on you so you don't fall into temptation. So you got to be strong. So don't fuck any guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's so dumb. <laughs> so when did you first realize you were gay? Mm, when I was um, like 18, 19, I started to, um, well, I started watching porn when I was a teenager, which uh, kids, you shouldn't do. <laughs> um, and um, eventually, I just started looking at, at the guys more. When I moved out of my house to go to school, uh, and I had my own computer, and I didn't have to delete all the all the browser history, because uh, you really got to, uh, on Windows, you got to really look for the folders to, uh, to delete just the ones that are wrong. Because if you delete everything, my parents were like, what happened? Um, so oh, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm into computers. And w when I had my computer, I finally started going first. I started with like bisexual male, male threesomes, but the ones that were like, where the guys actually do stuff. Then I was like, fuck it. I'll just check a gay site. And I figured out that was my thing. I didn't actually have sex with a guy, well, sex, oral sex until I was 19. And I was drunk at a bar with some Swedish guys. And uh, we went to the bathroom and one asked me to hold his beer and then he started making out with me. And then one thing led to another. And at some point I was sucking a guy's dick. Like I just went for it. Like I, and I, then I was like, oh yeah, I think I might be gay. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Cause like a lot of people have this like, misconception in their head they're like oh you're a porn star you must have been having sex your whole life like for me the first time i had consensual sex was like 18. yeah exactly uh but what happened to you like where you like where you because here's the thing uh i accept that i was gay by then but then when i realized uh that that's how it feels and i started looking back i was like oh i've had a crush on a couple of classmates that's why I was upset that my best friend went with his girlfriend and not with me. But like, I wasn't trying to like touch my friends or like anything, but like, I like that kind of feeling of jealousy or whatever. I was like, Oh, that's like, that's a little bit more than just friendship. Or sometimes I would hug a particular friend and I would get a raging heart on and I would understand why. And, you know, like that click way, 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 way later when like I accepted that I was gay. I was like, oh, I had a crush on that guy. Oh, that's why I got a boner when I hugged him. Yeah, yeah. So like the puzzle pieces finally just mm -hmm. came together. Yeah, because um, uh, growing Catholic sex is a no-no. Like you only have sex to have a child. So you only have sex when you're married. So in my mind, I was like, oh, well, I just was... I'll have sex when I want to, when I get married or whatever, because I was really, really believing the lie. So even if the thought like was presented to me, like, oh, do you think you might be gay? Like I would fight against it. And like, I myself would tell myself that I'm not gay. Like if I looked at a bodybuilder magazine, I'm like, oh, I want to be like those guys. Now I realize I wanted to have sex with those guys. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, still about it like that. Mm -hmm. No, it took me time to process because like one thing is coming out and like you, the most important pa part of coming out is coming out to yourself. Yep. Then it's easy. Uh, but what happened to you? Like, why did you, why did you wait so long? You have sex. I don't, I had a very unique childhood, so it wasn't really an opportunity. Oh, interesting. So, like, for me, it was it was somebody that I worked with, and it was in the car, go figure. Oh, wow. Until you were 18? 19? Yeah, 18. Wow. No, and, and car sex is, God. <laughs> it's one of those things that sounds great in theory, but it's terrible in practice. No, how tall are you? I can't even imagine having sex in a car now. Like, <laughs> fuck that. Yeah, no, like, even a pickup truck, they're large, but, like, you can't feed them there. <laughs> Yeah, and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it looks, it looks cool, but like it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. I'm curious, like, because that's another thing. Like with with porn stars, is like 
I don't think your average viewer understands the difference between something may look hot on camera, oh, yeah. but is not actually hot. I know. I keep explaining that to people because uh, on like on my page, I post my personal sex videos. It's not heavily produced. I don't have a camera guy. Like I, I'm like, hey, this is sex. Look at it. And it doesn't look as, whoa, like they make it seem. Because sometimes like I see people doing things that I don't think they feel right. Or something yeah. like, you know, when you eat ass on camera and it's like, uh, no, I'm, I'm like this when I'm eating ass. Like, you cannot see my face. <laughs> no, it's so true, though. Or even like uh, another one is like shower sex. Like it looks super hot. Uh. And you think about, not during. Like, I'm like concerned I'm going to fucking slip and bust my ass uh yeah and like you know like you got water going in your nose uh the lube just washes off all the time uh no 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 and um i mean thank god there's fan pages for that because uh studios have really done a number on sex and um uh, i well yeah i just did an interview with another guy that was like hey what do you think of like people that like educate themselves on sex on porn sites i'm like no get a biology book <laughs> yeah sexology book and do that because like what you're seeing doesn't even feel right like those guys aren't even gay like that's not how you put it in an ass and if you like that like if you're at the bottom and you like that like maybe go talk to a psychologist because like that's not normal <laughs> yeah no there's a lot of things though because even like you know in studio porn you know mm -hmm. it's like you just see someone like spit on their dick and rammed in. It's like, no, <sighs> you don't actually do that. Like all the prep and everything that all got edited out. You yeah. know, it's normal to take five, 10, whatever, however long to you yeah. know, kind of ease into yeah, it. Exactly. You know? I know. Yeah. And like, Oh, also the situations where like, Oh, you're at the office and like, let's have sex. Like, um, that's not how ass works. <laughs> <laughs> like no one's always do well there's some people but like you're not usually ready to get fucked everywhere yeah some guys are and i'm glad porn found them because i know some sex addicts but like <laughs> yeah no but that's another thing like people think that everybody that works in porn like they just have sex all the time i'm glad some people that are sex addicts found porn because they're in the right job like i thought i was a horny guy until i met some of my coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> and, i don't know most of the people i shoot with actually their sex drives aren't that high at all it actually um i don't well how, how well you've been you, you i've been seeing you for years. you've definitely been here longer than me um but like what what i've noticed um and what has happened to me started to happen a couple of years now that like i'm a little bit more established i i say like people kind of place me so and Montreal, I live in Montreal. Hi, everyone. Um, it's an island. It's not that big. And, you know, the gay population isn't that big. So eventually they all find out that you're doing porn. And for some reason, um, it is a cock block. Like guys actually turn me down because I do porn. So um, I try to conceal it as much as possible. But I, like I'm like, I deleted my apps uh, back in December because I um, well, first of all, when I had my photo on my profile, I was just getting food, uh, feed photos. Because apparently I was. <laughs> I was the darling of the feed uh, community. And guys would just send me feed photos. And I'm like, you realize that I'm an actor, right? Like, I like feet, but you're starting to ruin it for me. So I stopped using my photos, but then I would send my photos and they'll be like, oh, fake profile and just like uh, block me. And uh, I'm not getting laid as much as I used to. So, like, my sex really? life actually has gone, like, more calm since I started doing porn. But now... That's so to... true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did that happen to you, too? Yeah, like, and most of the people I interview actually have less sex after getting into porn than they did before. Yeah, and it's not that I like sex less. Like, I like it just as much. It's just that, like... It's sort of like, I don't know if porn or whatever, like puts a barrier between people and I, or what the concept is. Cause I, I don't have a bad concept of porn actors because there's all sorts of people. So, and I've met all sorts of people in every field. Like if you go, I used to work at restaurants and 
the people at Kitchens are way cra crazier than porn actors. Uh, I, <laughs> so like, like, it's not like a character trait that everybody has in porn. Like it's, it's all sorts of people. So I don't see why people think that, oh, well, one, one that I've heard a lot is, oh, you guys have a lot of diseases. And I'm like, no, I'm, I get tested the most. Yeah. Well, actually with me, if you ever get something, uh, I'll be able to tell you what it is. So you can get treated before you pass it on. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing, like it just it like I, I I see how porn could affect dating. Yeah, but porn affecting your sex life though, if it's just sex, I don't. I would think it would have the opposite effect. I thought the same thing, and I have been proven wrong <laughs> by life. So do you think that's rooted in the disease thing, or do you think it's rooted in something else? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, I do think that people believe that porn actors are morally corrupt. So there might be that. Um, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I have to be clear on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like for real, like I've had sex with guys like this, say, um, like three years ago, I invited a guy over on a Wednesday at 3 a.m. <laughs> Super hot guy, like rugby player type, big ass. Gave him, gave him the fuck of his life. He was fucking oh, like just happy when he left. And I texted him like, oh, my God, that was great. Let's meet again. So I texted him over, over the weekend. He doesn't reply. I just t texted him again like a week later. Still no. And then like a few more days, I was like, hey, dude, everything okay? She's like, I actually, I found out that you're a porn actor. So I don't want to have to do anything with you. I'm like, um, dude, you came up to my house on a Wednesday at 3 a.m. like, I'm not expecting much out of this. I just want to get laid. Like, like, how does doing porn change anything? If you just want that's so strange. Like, why that would negatively impact that? Uh huh. Like, but <sighs> as far as the morally corrupt thing, though, I actually had a uh, because I'm in uh, grad school right now, working on my MBA. Mm -hmm. And one of the classes I'm taking this semester is business law and ethics. Okay. And we were doing like class introductions on the first day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had to introduce ourselves, what we did for a living, all that. Have we ever taken ethics? And I, you know, said what I do for a living. I've always been very open about it. Yep. And I was like, I love ethics. It's my favorite subject. It was my favorite class in undergrad. <laughs> and the professor said, quote, well, I find that rather ironic that you love ethics given your profession. I was like, the fuck? What the fuck does porn have to do with ethics? I don't. If anything, we're really ethic. Like, we keep it as legal as possible and, like, as decent as it can be. Like, yeah, I can't think of anything unethical in porn. Yeah, like, actually, like, I, like, I've sometimes pointed out that, like, oh, and also the difference between straight porn and gay porn. Wow. The things that they do to chicks, uh, sometimes I would like to see on gay porn, but uh, there's like a, a community or something that like checks videos before they're posted or like when, they, when they're when they posted, they're like, no, remove that because you said this word or because there was a glass of alcohol in the background or because the person appeared asleep and we don't know why or, you know, little random shit like that. And I'm like, wow, okay, like you guys are really picky, but like, that's not how real life happens. So, like, why will you portray it more? Uh, like, I don't know. Like, I would like yeah. to more real stuff or real life situations, even if they're like a little weird or like strange. But like, at least if you have it on video, you might not have the person do it. That's actually really interesting. I never talked about that with anyone on these interviews. But I don't think your average porn consumer understands, like, those little things like that. Like, I remember one time we, I took, like, a nap or whatever. Yeah. And it was just because, like, you know, when you're sleeping, sometimes your dick will go up and down, up and down, like a wet dream or whatever. And the, the point of the video was to capture that. And I couldn't even post it because it was, like, because I was sleeping in it. Yeah. 
or like if you want to do like a video where you're sleeping and get woken up with a blowjob or something like there's all kinds of little things like that you can't post because it violates some bullshit i know yeah 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 i, I mean consent yes all you want but like it is kind of hard to be woken up with a blowjob like i'm, I'm <laughs> Like I've woken up, like I woken up, like a guy that I was fucking. He's like, "Hey, you want to wake up my roommate with a blowjob?" I'm like, "Sure." Is he cool with that? Yeah, yeah, he loves that. But like, if you try to post that on the video, it'll be like, "Oh, sexual assault!" Like, if everybody's a willing participant, how, you know? But I understand that, like, once you get past a certain point, it just goes downhill. But like, you drew the line a little bit before the fun part yeah yeah no there's lots of little things though that mm -hmm. but your story though about that guy i don't know it just hear me out i'm playing devil's advocate go for it yeah like perhaps it didn't have to do with you being a porn star because one thing i've noticed with huh? gay men and i don't know why it is but it's like like, okay, if I'm a gay guy and I'm like, oh, my God, I really want to have sex with Rocky, right? Once they have sex with you, they lose all interest. It's like a conquest to them. Yeah. Not for me. For me, I'll have sex with the same person every day forever and never get bored. But, like, I don't understand why a lot of gay men, they only want to have sex with someone once, even if it's good. And then they just move on and move on and move on. Do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, I, I, I understand the novelty factor. Uh, I understand that some people love the showmanship and every day is the first show, so they have to give their all. And everything after that might be a little bit of a downgrade. But no, no, like I, uh, my best friend Marcus, uh, he, he likes to say that like he has better sex with someone he knows well, um, which hasn't happened a lot <laughs> with me. Uh, but like I was well, the, the other day, I was having sex with someone that like I'm friends with and like we've been like friends for a while. And it actually is better when you know the person, like when you actually like get along and it might be, it might not be like all like bells and whistles and like fireworks, but it, it is better. Yeah. So like, I don't see what the problem is with building a connection. Uh, feelings are a hard thing and a lot of people can control them or understand them, but, uh, like I would like people to talk about it more instead of just blocking the channel and be like, ah, I don't want to talk to you because you have sex with a bunch of people. Like you have sex with me. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I just, I don't understand that self-righteous bullshit. Mm, yeah. I mean, like, just, Oh, you're dirty. You're this, you're that like, fuck you motherfucker. Yeah. Like, that's another thing. Like when people think that sex is dirty is like, um, yeah, you still have it. So. <laughs> 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 like what's wrong with it like uh, i'm not gonna soil myself by having sex with like 10 people as opposed to 50 like it's not gonna be that different i might have a more like like a stronger immune system though yeah no i mean what you said though is so true about connection because it's like yeah the more i know someone the more i respect them as a person the more i know them their body their likes mm -hmm. their wants the better sex gets i don't like i get like oh someone's new i get that like anticipation but like i i don't know i mean I, I i mean every time i have sex with a new person which has happened that much lately <laughs> uh, it's so frustrating because like like it sounds like oh wow i have a lot of sex I no longer do. <laughs> I jerk off a lot more now. Um, like I, I like I like discovering the person, like going through every inch of the body, see which part is the one that makes them tick. Because not everybody's the same. Like some people, if you touch them here, like they just. Some people, you touch them here, they're happy. Some tickle, like some like their nipple. Like I, I I'm like, ooh, a new toy. I'm the machine. Let me check. Ooh, you didn't know you like this. Let me do more. Uh, but once I know that, and I see them again. I do more of that instead of wasting time with the rest. And then the sex is even better. Yes, exactly. No, you, <laughs> you just worded it perfectly. Yeah. But, I'm but, curious. Hmm? What things have you, I don't want to say disliked, but like, 
Okay, I'll give you an example. Yeah, me. yeah go for it. Don't, don't, don't. I never, I never thought like someone like really going to town on my armpits. Mm-hmm. I, I had never thought about it. I had never considered it. Yeah. And then one day I was shooting with a guy and he was really going to town on my armpits. And I was like, damn, this actually feels really good. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, now I love that, but I discovered it by accident. Like, I, has that ever happened to you? Uh, well, I mean, I'm the one that makes people discover stuff. Um, I, I, I'm not that disconnected from my body. So like, I am aware of all my sensations and everything. Like, I know what I like now. Uh, so by now I haven't had sex or like done something. I'm like, oh, wow. Didn't know that one. But I'm also 38 years old and I've been having sex for like, Ain't, oh, I, my first anal, <coughs> the first time I had anal sex, I was 22. <laughs> so I waited from 19 till 22 to actually have anal. Why? Um, I was scared. Well, HA, um, prep wasn't that famous back then. Um, and you know, like everybody that grew up in the eighties and nineties, uh, like were scared to that death of HIV and like. I was just scared of having sex, even with a condom. Uh, so I always kept like, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but eventually I did. And I was, uh, and also, uh, uh, you know, like literature, media, whatever, the, my religious parents, they make sex seem as way more than it actually is that is harder to get or that is more relevant or more important. It's like, it's not that much. Like a lot of people have it. It's easy and it feels great. Uh, but like, you know, it's not as impressive as, uh, I was thought it was, uh, but once I discovered it was easier, <laughs> I just wanted to have it with everyone. <laughs> So were you kind of like a bird whose cage got open for the first time? So like, are yeah. you 22, you have anal sex for the first time. Then did you just go off the deep end and become like oh. a man whore? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as I discovered that, I was like, where's a dick and where's an ass? Let me try everyone. I'm going to get chucked. Because, you know, when I was younger, like, all, I, I don't know if it was true, but I'm, I'm thinking for like my younger, like, classmates and stuff. Like, they were talking about sex all the time and shit. And... I was, I was not like, I didn't even kiss a girl until I was 18 and she's the one that started that. <laughs> so have you ever been with a girl sexually like penetration or no? Mm, that's your subject, but yes. <laughs> Cause now I'm going to get all the people that are going to call me fake gay. So please guys isolate that part <laughs> and play it on the loop. Um, okay. Here's the thing. Here's what happened to me. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had, I, I had, um, I went to the university and one of my classmates had a sister that was 25 years old. I was 18 at the time. Um, and she sort of groomed me for a while. Um, and she got me drunk and got in my bed and she like sat on my dick. Gladly I got soft because <laughs> I have an incredible fear of pregnancy. Uh, now if this were a South Park episode, everyone would be like, nice. But if the roles were reversed, uh, it would be called rape. However, in my case, uh, as the people in social science and humanities like to call it, would be called corrective rape. Because what I, I used to tell her, like, I think I'm gay. And she was like, no, I'm going to prove you that you're not. Because women are like that. I don't, I haven't had women be like that. Oh, thank God, man. Because, like, some chicks are, like, chicks are the worst. Uh, if anything, I see the reverse where it's you'll get a guy who's straight and then you'll get all the gay guys who are like, oh, I can turn him gay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I always see I, it reverse. I, I, yeah, I, I, I see all of it, but I, I hate those guys because <laughs> they're like, they're really giving us a bad name. Um, like, I, I don't think anybody should be forced to have sex and I don't think anybody should be told what they should like. And even if they don't know it, they shouldn't be forced into it until they decide. Uh, and I find that shit like every gay guy thinks that they're the unicorn that is going to turn that hot guy gay. Like, no, dude, like leave them alone. Just look at them. You don't have to touch them. Um, but I, I have seen though, uh, the thing is that like it, when things happen to guys, it is really downplayed. 
Uh, and I hate that because it is not okay. Um, like, but I, I have seen it happen a lot with my straight friends because like, most of my friends are straight actually that chicks will tease them and coerce them into sex by calling them gay. Like, Oh, why don't you want to fuck me? Are you gay? And when they get them drunk enough just to prove themselves, they will fuck the chick that is called coerce sex. Um, and it's not okay, wow. ladies. Yeah. I've seen chicks. I, oh, I had a roommate, a really hot roommate, a uh, rugby man. Um, he would get shit face drunk and like, I saw a chick leaving his uh, bedroom once more, one morning and she just left. When he woke up, I was like, Hey, what's up with this chick? And he's like, what? So yes, it does happen. Chicks do take advantage of guys when they're drunk. But what happened to me is that like the chick was like, no, I'm going to prove you that you're not gay. I'm like, uh, that's not how it works. Um, it still happened. Um, I, I myself downplayed it too, cause, uh, I was still in the closet back then, but like, I've, now that I'm older, like I've processed it. I'm like, oh, that's why I like that kind of freaky sex. Cause your first sexual experience does, uh, sort of like mark you a little. That yeah, actually. Yeah, no, I don't, cause that's something I've always been fascinated by. Cause you know, people are into all sorts of kinks and fetishes. Mm -hmm. And shit, and like I always wondered where some of that stuff comes from, because like a lot of people who are attracted to me, I I get it, because it's like I remind them of the guy that their dad tried keeping him away from the bad boy, whatever. Yeah, oh, it's like, I get that. Because okay, let me say it. Like, it is mesmerizing. Your eyes are so pretty. <laughs> like they're so sparkly. So um, I'm sorry. Like it's just in. I can't believe I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm nervous. But like, but like, then there's some stuff where I'm just like, where the fuck did this shit come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like, um, I like neuroscience a lot. Um, so sometimes there is like wiring in the brain that happens either during your development or uh, because the body is funky. Apparently, like, let's say food fetish, um, some psychologists would say that is because like, oh, it's like the most ritual thing that you have when you're a kid. Cause you know, when you're like crawling, the feet would be like the first thing that you're able to touch. That's some people, uh, on neuroscience, um, apparently the part that the, like the nerve that is that, you know, that comes from the genitals is like right next to the one that comes from your feet. So sometimes if whatever, like the wires cross a little and you can get turned on by having your feet touch. Um, but also like imagery or situations, I have an obsession with underwear myself. Um, but like, I like looking at the, the clothesline uh, hanging in my neighbor's bathroom, uh, uh, backyard. Cause my neighbor, my neighbors, uh, when I was younger, like they were like, uh, she had like three, um, three sons and they were all super sexy. And I, I like looking at their underwear hanging uh, <laughs> in the backyard. <laughs> like, That's fascinating. Yeah, but like people, people have a hard time like actually exploring the origin of things. And that's annoying because like sometimes if it's really weird, like in my case, because like it, it took me a while to realize that I like like fucked up sex because my first experience was sort of a rape. Um, <clears throat> but like it like if you if you explore it and acknowledge it, you can grow out of it or uh like actually take ownership of the situation and then deal with it interesting have you ever heard of like because mm -hmm. like i i've encountered a lot of people like since you know doing this where they're like super ashamed of what they're into or you know they have a lot of guilt surrounding it yeah. like is that even possible to to change what you're into what you're turned on by do you think um up to a certain degree i guess yes because uh now now that I, like I've, I've been talking about my situation with um with some of my acquaintances and i've actually calmed down a lot on that respect it's like i won't say on camera but like i like i like i like my fun um you know like orgies gangbangs and all that shit and like it's fun but it's not your everyday shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, where does that come from? Oh, or like, 
maybe I'm punishing myself or like some, and it's not even the same thing for everyone, but you really got to talk about it to be able to discover why, like me, my obsession with feet is because when, uh, when I was growing up, uh, like I, like my parents were like super Catholic. So like they didn't even let me hug another kid. Cause like that was gay. So I grew up not touching, uh, pretty much anyone. Um, and, but like we once had cousin over and, uh, he was playing with my toes and it turned me on so much. Uh, and I did, I like, I didn't even pay attention to it until, uh, a few months ago that I was doing some insight and I was like, Oh, that's why I like the feet. That's where it started. But you really got to think about it. And, uh, you got to be willing to like see it completely without judgment, without anything to uh, either grow out of it or accept it. Cause if, you, if you're ashamed of your kink, I get that sometimes it's kind of fun to have your own secret, but uh, if you're actually, actually ashamed, maybe work on it. Yeah. But how do you work on it? How can you grow out of something or move it, you know, on from it? Uh, by doing what I just said, like you really, like you really got to do the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, uh, things, cause there is not a one size size fits all for something that is mental or physical. Like the mind and the body are really complicated machines. So I could say something, but, and it might have worked for me, but it might not work for other people. Yeah. I, I must, I'm still like, I still wonder why I like women to wear high heels when I don't even like women. But if I see a woman in high heels, like I, that will get me to turn my head. Really? Yeah. It is so That's... weird. <laughs> but <That's>... I'm gay. <laughs> let, let, me, let me express that. Because <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, you're, you're gay, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you ever get people like nagging you about being gay for pay or anything. Yeah. I mean, I've shot like a bunch of scenes with like women and trans and stuff like that. Okay. So I'll get a bunch of people who are like, Oh, I got a problem with the fact that you had sex with a woman or whatever. I, mm -hmm. Trust me, dude. I've heard all that bullshit before. Yeah. Uh, I get that a lot. Everybody thinks I'm straight. Probably because I pretended to be straight for so long that it just is my default mode mode. Yeah. But like, like I'm not pretending to look straight. I'm, I just behave the way I am, the, the way I do. Yeah. And, um, and I get people like accusing me of like, oh, you're a fake gay. You're just stealing money from the gays. And I'm like, what's gay money? <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot of that shit. Dude. Yeah. People, but like going back to the kink fetish thing, like <laughs> it's interesting that, that you remember those experiences, yeah. like, you know, with the underwear and hanging up and stuff like that. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people, can't really they're into something but they don't remember what started it mm -hmm. you know either they blocked out their childhood or you know what i mean because yeah, no. if you don't know what started there or where it's rooted what what do you yeah well that's a problem that's why you really gotta explore but you also gotta allow yourself to think the thoughts because that, that is that's one of the things that blocks people from uh, actually exploring their own mind like you put a label on a, on a situation or a thought and you're like, Oh, that's wrong. I won't go into it. And I, I have no problem with thinking the worst things imaginable. Uh, as a mental exercise, not because I want to act on whatever weird thought I have, but like just as a men mental exercise, like, Oh, what is this? And sometimes you end up remembering things that you locked out of your mind. And, uh, it's happened to me. Um, uh, <laughs> and, uh, just people really need to, people really need to free themselves, even in their own minds. I, I don't think that people allow themselves to think certain things. Yeah. And no, sex I, is such I, a touchy subject that people don't want to talk about at a dinner table or whatever because uh, it's not polite. Or it's like, no, if like if you talk about it more, everybody will be having better sex. No. Yeah. Has <laughs> your sexuality evolved like as you've aged? Um, hmm, disregarding the fact that I get laid less, hmm, 
I am more, um, well, yeah, actually, um, I've noticed that when I, because now I'm sort of self-employed. I mean, I still work for companies when they hire me, but like now that I am self-employed, I am slightly more submissive in sex. But when I was an employee and when I like, I had a lot of things that were, that I was in no control of, I was extremely dominant in my sex life. So I, I do feel that certain aspects of life refle reflect in my sex life. Uh, so yes, I, I, I used to be extremely dominant. Like I wouldn't even like get fucked doggy. Uh, and now, now I'm more like, yeah, yeah, you go, yeah, have your way. Um, but because, but I like, I wouldn't allow people to have any control over me when I was being controlled. Now that I have more control of my life, I'm more willing to give up control sexually. That's one thing that has happened. And another thing that has happened is that I am a lot more empathic with people. Uh, cause I don't know, I guess like once you have more experiences with people, you're able to pinpoint certain emotions. Uh, and I am like, I am way, way more polite now about certain feelings, uh, that other people can have, um, cause you know, emotions are hard and sometimes I, I'm able to separate sex and feelings. Some people can't. Why, why do you think that is? Cause I mean, you're definitely right though. A lot of people like some guys can just have sex. It's just sex. And then, you know. Some people, it's like they have sex with someone one time, and they're like, "Oh my god, I love you." What? Those are scary, though. <laughs> if you tell me you love me after one time we have sex, I'm not gonna talk to you again. <laughs> oh my god! But yes, yeah, extreme. Why do you think? Where do you think that comes from, though? Because some people can't separate it. It's probably education. Because um, uh, I mean. Culturally, like you only have sex with the people you love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, like in a heteronormative world. Uh, and some people do, like even gay people do internalize that. Like, oh, I'm just going to have sex with my boyfriend. But if I had that mindset, I would have never have sex because uh, like I've only had like four boyfriends in my whole life. No, three. Really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, none of those relationships went, went right. So... Um, <laughs> so I'm personally not a big fan of, um, relationships. What went wrong? If you know what I'm asking? Um, uh, well, the first one was a con artist. He got arrested by the FBI. So he stole money from me. He lied and he, he lied and gaslit me a lot. Uh, so I ended up having a lot of like trust issues after that one. That was when I was uh, 21. Um, I won't name him, but he was on the press. Like there were news newspaper news news articles about him. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Thank God he hasn't contacted me. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, like imagine like your very first boyfriend uh, after a year of like a torturous like relationship like gets arrested like by the fucking FBI man. What the fuck? <laughs> For uh, identity theft and uh, fraud. Um. I didn't date for like eight years after that uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like so uh, i was just i couldn't trust anyone uh then eventually like i calmed down a little bit i tried again bumped into another crazy one uh that one was like a really controlling um i used to have a weird relationship with money where like i equated with affection because my dad was that was his way of showing love um and I was, uh, I started dating this banker and he had this thing where he will take you out because uh, he remained my friend for a few, for a few years until he admitted that he still had feelings for me. Uh, he, he will grab guys, um, take them out of their city, bring them to his city, make them economically dependent of him and then treat them like shit. Um, I got onto that early. So I broke up with him and just kept him as a friend. <laughs> But um, I um, I didn't like that situation either. So that was the second one. Then the third one was a musician, and um, he was certified crazy. Uh, I got him to see the shrink, but uh, he was uh, he was really mean to me. And um, after that one, I was like, maybe I'm the problem. 
I have bad taste in men. <laughs> and, but that, well, now when it comes to relationship, one thing that uh, people also don't want to explore, um, I'm really into psychology. And uh, my parents had a lot of psychology books at home all the time. There were, there were always like interesting, like informational stuff at my house. So I like, I used to read a lot. And uh, when you're growing up at your house, you will like, as a child, like you don't know what's happening in other people's houses. So like, you will always think like your house is how things are. Now, um, if you grow up in a happy, loving home where people are nice, and like you're going to grow up into like sort of a well-established person. If you don't, like, let's say if you, if your parents beat you and then they tell you they love you, you might think it's normal to get beaten. Yeah. Like if, like uh, all there's weird situations happen, like you, like you will think that that's what love is because that's what happened at home, but you will not really realize it. So once you get out into life and start dating people, the wiring is already set up. So like you will have your reactions and your emotions and whatever happen automatically. You might not know why. So like, let's say somebody will say something and it might upset you. It might be the dumbest thing. Like, Oh, I don't like your shirt. Yeah. That will go back to one time that your dad or your mom told you something weird. And it was like, it will spark the same reaction. You might not know why, but then you will have all these hormones and feelings and shit going through that will cause things. And then you will have a problem in your relationship, but you will not realize, Oh, why? Like, if I like this thing, or like, if I consider this is love and, uh, and this happens to me, um, and you don't question why it happens, uh, you're just going to continue having weird relationships. So you really got to explore your childhood. When did you start feeling certain things or when did you start having certain reactions to a phrase, a situation or whatever, and then unfold it, explore it, see what it is that like rub you the wrong way and then maybe try to fix it. Some people don't take the time to actually work on that. I had a really, um, um, I had a nice childhood. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm a spoiled brat. I like, I went to private schools. Uh, I study in Europe. I have zero complaints about my upbringing. I am well educated. Uh, I never liked anything. My parents were great. However, they were really weird with the uh, affection thing. They were not effective. Uh, sex was a topic you never discuss. Um, and they did beat me as a child uh, from time to time. So like, I do have a, a habit of picking guys that are, aren't actually nice to me or uh, that have qualities that I don't have. So like, I like, I always, uh, well, always like those three times. I fall for guys that are like super flashy, super narcissistic, like really sure of themselves because I really don't have that in my, in my own self. But, uh, out of those, just one, uh, tried to punch me, <laughs> but, um, like if I pick those guys that make me feel that way, it's probably because I'm used to certain patterns of behavior. I'm still working on that. So right now I'm avoiding dating because. I don't think I've worked enough on um, my wiring. I don't know if I've made sense so far. No, actually, like I've always been fascinated by psychology and everything you're saying yeah. makes sense because it's it's almost like the best example I can give is like your stereotypical woman mm -hmm. who goes from abusive douchebag asshole to abusive douchebag asshole and they keep repeating the exact same pattern mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Yeah. And like just your critical self evaluation and like introspection is super, super rare because most people will keep repeating the same pattern and they'll never look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's interesting because we tend to, like you said, there'll be like an experience in your childhood or whatever, like, oh, you think money equals love or whatever. Yeah. And most people just carry that for the rest of their life. They never change it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, um, now that I'm like sort of independent, I don't have to worry about money. Actually, I feel less funky when I see guys cause I don't have the money issue. Like, you know, 
hanging over me because you know how some guys like when they're rich like they like to brag about they like to get like younger guys that are like hot and like yeah use them up and they like to brag about it but they don't impress me much <laughs> but i find it funny <laughs> when they do it like i was just with a guy that was like yeah i have two houses because um here's the thing like, I, I do this thing when i moved out of my my boyfriend's place when you know when i kicked him out and then i switched to a different apartment and i started doing porn uh, i kicked him out with everything uh like bed, furniture, everything. Like I ended up sleeping on the floor. Um, eventually I got a mattress <laughs> and I still leave, I sleep on the floor, um, on the mattress to make sure that people don't want to stay over. <laughs> um, so like sometimes people think I'm poor. Um, and I like them to think that <laughs> like I hide my books. Like if you look around, like there's no books in the house, but I also want them to think I'm stupid. <laughs> And people, they're like, sometimes they don't conceal their bad intentions, but it's kind of cute. I was with this old man and he was like, yeah, like, you know, I can show you how to make money. I can pimp you. And I'm like, oh, you should be a model. Like, you, oh, you should be born. I'm like, oh, yeah, you think? Yeah, maybe I should try that, <laughs> man. Like, I'll think about it. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's true, though. Like... <laughs> especially a lot of gay men like they're like that they're impressed by money or they're impressed by all these things and it's like no i want you to actually like me for me not mm -hmm. because some external bullshit yeah yeah no i mean like honestly like if money is all you have to offer like <laughs> it will get you laid and it will get you some like shitty guys if that's the way you try to date like I like, and, but also like, I, like, like I told you, I had a weird relationship with money. So like now that I'm more independent, uh, like I don't take certain bullshit from guys, yeah. but some other people might. <laughs> I wanted to go back to, to what you're saying about like when you were dominant versus submissive mm -hmm. in the bedroom and all that. So when you were more dominant in the bedroom, what were you doing for your regular job? Um, I used to work at a call center uh, for a radiography equipment company. So it was like, it was more specialized. It wasn't like your Verizon every day where I was talking to doctors and radiologists. Eventually I ended up handling the database of the factory. Uh, but working once there's a human resources department at any company, it all goes down the drain because uh, uh, what they want is just compliant people. So like, even if something is wrong and you bring it up, they'll be like, well, that's how it's done. And you're like, why? Or, you know, when you go to an interview for human resources, like, what, uh, what are your best achievements? Like, you gotta make shit up to like, please them. I like, or why do you want this job? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm addicted to eating and having a roof over my head, but you cannot say that. <laughs> oh my God. But like, what I want to get at though, in that is, I think a lot of people underestimate mm -hmm. there needs to be counterbalance in life. Yeah. Like a lot of the times if someone is like super in charge, you know, in their job and, or, you know, they're in control of a lot of people that they tend to be more submissive in the bedroom. And, oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I mean, I, what people do is not the first thing I ask, but when I find out that they're like in a position of control, I know what to do with them. <laughs> like I once fucked this hotel manager like for like three hours straight. And I didn't take my dick out. I was like 20. Like I could keep a heart on for three hours back then. <laughs> now I'm like, hey, can we kiss a little? Like I just need some connection. <laughs> uh, but like, dude, he was in heaven. Like he still like messages me like, oh my God, I still remember that time. I'm like, yeah, I asked you to fuck again, but you said no. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, people in positions of control, they really like to be dominated. Yeah, but then the reverse is also true a lot of the time. Uh, yeah, which is happening like, to me right now. <laughs> Where, like, I have so many things to, like, take care of that at some point I'm like, oh, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because, like, I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, oh, that. That's why, because um, in general, like, I would not let the top move, like, if I'm bottoming. <laughs> but, so, would you describe yourself as more of a power bottom? 
Um, no, no, no. I don't use that label. I, 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 like, I, I, I tell people that I take one for the team. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Cause, uh, no, power bottom. No, I use it. Uh, those labels are scary. Like power bottoms. Uh, I don't know if it's like they can take anything or, uh, they just want to get fucked and stuff. I don't, I don't know what the point is. Or like, if they're the ones like, I can definitely milk your dick. If you let me have my way, that's for sure. But like, I wouldn't call my like. If anything, I will call myself a dominant bottom. Yeah. Well, when I say power bottom, what I personally think of is a bottom who's like very responsive and very vocal and very engaging, and you know, not just like. Oh no, no, I'm not that. Like like fish now. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm I'm all in it. But the thing is that. Um, Power bottoms attract dumb tops a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I don't like dumb tops, especially the ones that don't suck dick and don't let you touch their ass. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you bumped into those. Do you, are you versatile? Yeah. Like in no, your, it's just like, top. okay. But yeah, no, I, I, but if I, no, I, I, I think I know the type you're talking about. And yeah, I, yeah, I like the, the ones that are like not fully close to the but almost. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, they'll be, like, out and gay, but, like, if you, like, if you even slide a finger down their crack, they're like, nope. Yeah, no, no, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, no, those guys, I don't, because they usually fuck really bad. Because they, they've they never had anything in their ass, so they just ram it inside and start bumping like a fucking jackhammer. Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. Or the, so, like, I would not label myself a power anything <laughs> right, so what do you what do you like off camera like who in, are you as a person what do you enjoy I, I, doing in your free time hold on my uh my neighbor is vacuuming <laughs> one second let me just grab some Actually, water. i can't hear it at all oh you cannot hear it oh perfect okay in my personal life like yeah general interest not uh sex yeah, yeah. um besides working out obviously um i like biking a lot so like I just roll around in my bike throughout the island and I find bakeries to eat because I love eating pastries. Uh, so like that, that's like, that's actually one of my hobbies. Like I just hop on my bike and like roll around and, um, you know, find places to eat because I love eating. I just love it so much. So whenever I see a place, I will stop and, you know, have a bite. I smoke a lot of weed. I'm not stoned right now. <laughs> um, what else do I do? I like watching movies. Not serious movies. I don't have time for serious, and I'm still hurt from Game of Thrones because it was eight years of my life that were wasted. <laughs> I, I'm actually. I just started watching Game of Thrones. Oh, stop at the you. stop at the at the fifth uh, season and don't m move forward. Trust me, like you will only be disappointed. <laughs> but the fifth, the fifth, fifth, sixth season was okay, but like by the fifth, you're like, whoa, man. And then it's not as good. Because what happened is that the guy uh, wrote the books. He was still writing the last book that is out, but the story isn't finished. So on Game of Thrones, like basically, they like it becomes two separate worlds around the third season. And uh, I already read all the books. Uh, actually, the last one I read slowly because I didn't want it to end because there is no more books. So. Now there's no more Game of Thrones on TV and there's no more uh, Game of Thrones on the books. So I like I, I'm not gonna give you any spoilers, but it is a completely different story after the third the third season. Yeah, no, I, I heard that it was really good and then it just Yeah. I'm also really into true crime and conspiracy theories, so I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um I read a lot of weird shit online. <laughs> Uh, I do inform myself, like I like I do look for the sources of like if somebody has like a short clip on TikTok about something that some senator said, I will go and find the Senate hearing or the Congress hearing and listen to the whole two, three hour thing while I'm doing something else to actually know what happened. Uh, because uh, I like being well informed and uh, people give me a lot of shit because I retweet like random stuff or uh, people think I'm not educated because I suck dick for money which is really annoying. That's another thing that like people are like, Oh, why are you, why do you have an opinion on something scientific? I'm like, well, probably cause I have a lot of free time to read. 
Uh, what else do I like? I used to be a tailor. I like um, I like making clothes. Really? Yeah. You can actually make clothes. Yeah. Okay, that's impressive. Yeah, I can show you. I got one right now. <laughs> um, look at the inside. It's super clean. Jesus. Yeah, actually, um, I, um, I mean, I like fashion. I like wearing clothes a lot more than I like making them. But uh, I, when I was young, when I was like 18, I read this book called No Logo by Naomi Klein. I don't know if you've heard about it. It explains, um, uh, she's an investigative uh, journalist. She's actually really, really, really thorough in her, in her research. And she, um, she did this thick ass book, like thick like this. It was like pfft, shit ton of pages about the fashion industry, but like how advertising got a little bit more seductive. The production costs went down through um, uh, outsourcing. Uh, the legal, you know, the legal terms were changed so that you could say made in Italy when you just put a button in Italy. Um, but the prices never went down. So what's happening with all the profit? So she did like a really, really thorough book about how the fashion industry worked, sweatshops, uh, laws, everything, everything. And it like, it gave me like a moral issue where like, I don't think you should pay $5 for a t-shirt. It doesn't make sense in any way. Like now that I know how long it takes to make clothes, uh, first, I know that the price that you're being charged is not the price that like actually cost and that people are extremely underpaid. The markup is obscene and I just have a moral issue buying a lot of ready to wear because it is not well made. The materials are bad and probably the conditions in which they were made weren't that great. So I don't like supporting that. Also, I think, uh, you know, Things being a source has caused most countries to become dependent on others. Uh, we saw that uh, with, on, during the Corona Fest where we didn't even get like masks because the factory was somewhere else and whatever. That doesn't make sense to me. Economically, if you're uh, a jerk or like a, a corporate owner or whatever, it will make sense to you, but you're fucking everybody in the ass and you're also making uh, most places not self-sufficient. Yeah. which is not good in the case of an emergency. Like you should be able to produce what you need locally as much as possible. And clothes and food are one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm like more into because I've, I've worked in those fields. Um, also, even like, even if let's say you're a manufacturer and you ask a factory to do certain finishings, they will not because it takes too much time. Wow. Yeah. It, like, even if you pay them. I watched a, you might find it interesting. Yeah. Shit. I watched a, a documentary the other day. It was on, I think it was on Netflix, but mm -hmm. it was talking about like fast fashion and, yep. uh, and, uh, was it Sheen and all this shit now? Mm -hmm. And, no, it was in uh, one of my classes, and they're talking about how like the average American throws away something like sixty pounds of clothes a year. Oh wow, that's a lot. But yeah, it was like something absolutely insane. Yeah, and no, um, I've been to um, I've been to lectures uh, from uh, Zara. Well, you know Zara from Inditex, they're a Sp Spanish um, corporation. What they do is that they. Um, the owner goes to the fashion shows, then they steal the concepts, make them cheap in a sweatshop or on a boat sweatshop. That's the most interesting one. They will just like do things in boats and just deliver them on the go. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's horrible. You can all find you can find all that in the logo. I'm not making this shit up. It's all like reference and shit. Uh, people don't want to listen to these things because uh, it will probably like make them feel bad. But uh, if your clothes are cheap. Everybody's getting fucked in the ass and not in a good way. Uh, and 
the thing is that like, uh, so yeah, I was at this lecture and like they give you the information and it, it was just a short paragraph, but like they lay it out there. We make our clothes so that they last uh, 15 to 30 wash cycles. So that you have, it's, it's sort of like plant obsolescence. Yep. I was just going to say like place. washers, dryers, microwaves, computers, all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, it is obviously to keep the economy running, which is a dick move. Uh, but the quality of clothes has gone way down. The prices have remained sort of steady and even gone up, but the quality hasn't gone like it hasn't gotten better. My like my Levi's used to last years. Now I walk three months with them and they're ripped in the crotch. And it's not because I have big thighs, it's because the quality is way lower. If you want to get too technical, it's because the fibers are shorter because they're not letting the plants grow enough and uh what not. So like it just breaks down faster. Also, high efficiency detergent is clothes solvent. Really? Oh yeah, dude, like um, cause I used to have a regular machine and just use regular soap and I'm like, do the Martha Stewart thing where like I put vinegar and all that shit to actually clean it. Nah, uh, now I, I only have a uh, high efficiency right now. I'm going to get a new one when my neighbor moves out and, um, clothes just last less. So what and detergent would you recommend using? Regular soap, regular soap, just because I don't know if you've read the label, but it's solvent like it's alcohols like you're not even like supposed to touch them you're not supposed to have it on your skin it will burn it cleans great but it is like it just breaks down the fiber i've like and now now when like i wear clothes i will just flex and they they will rip never happened to me before and it's not because i'm bigger now like it's like literally like you can feel it in the fabric that it's just drier Interesting. No, I mean, like, as you're saying this, I'm going through and I'm thinking and like, yeah, like jeans I used to buy, fuck, 15 years ago would last forever. But yep. Any jeans I bought recently, you're right. It's about 15 to 30 washes and they're done. Oh, it's completely intentional. And it, it's just because people are greedy and money hungry and uh, it's, it's not cool. Like, you shouldn't have to buy a lot of stuff. You like, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I'm all for capitalism, but I'm not for being a dick. Like you should yeah. make things, you should make them well, and you should make them last to last as long as possible so that you don't have to buy more. And that should be like what you take pride in that you don't have to like that. You make things that last. Yeah. You're making quality shit. Mm hmm. But also like fucking parties. washers and fucking refrigerators from the 1950s. They'll last longer than time itself. I know, but like they made up those laws where like, oh, the gas isn't like up to standard. So you're going to have to update it. Yeah, no, lobbying and all that shit is it's uh, but, you know, when you talk about those things, uh, even if you're well documented and you tell you tell them with examples, people will call you a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I don't know anyone who disagree with that. I mean, oh, I know. Land obsolescence is built into fucking everything. Like, yeah, it, yeah, fucking even your television. No, well, I don't download software upgrades uh, until I'm forced to because I know that they will slow my devices down. But yeah, Apple actually paid a huge um they had a class uh, lawsuit fine for that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's every software update would make your phone run fucking worse and worse and worse. So you go out and buy the latest and greatest iPhone. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, it's all intentional. But um, I guess it's overwhelming to realize it and accept it and like not have any power over it. Yeah. But actually, we all do. We just got to get together and do it. Because the class action lawsuit actually like went through. It was so many people that it ended up being like fifteen dollars each, but it it is proven that like you like companies are intentionally fucking sh your shit up so that you have to buy more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there's a guy that has the um, the American phone or something like that. I don't know if you follow him on Twitter, but there's a guy that is um, 
Yeah. I, well, I don't know how it went for him with the recent crypto stuff because he was like crypto millionaire. Uh, but there was a guy that was making a phone that you can repair and upgrade and update that was supposed to be compatible with um, everything. But oh, it's not available here. So I, <laughs> but it was, it was the, the American phone or some shit like that. I look it up and um, and send it to you when I, when I can. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> so my last question is for anyone watching this who wants to see your content what yeah. are all your social media the only fan what's all that anything and everything you want to plug uh well you can find me on most socials as rocky vallarta so i'm on twitter um just for fans i love just for fans you can do kinkier stuff there i'm also on only fans but they're kind of they're kind of vanilla um i'm on mm, 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 or else I'm, i i have a youtube channel where i post like more comp stuff you know all my sewing and stuff if you want to see it Sometimes when I, I'm cutting fabric or whatever, uh, like I post the sessions there. And um, I also have a podcast on SoundCloud. On that one, I'm slash Vallarta Rocky. Uh, I don't post a lot on it. It's just erotic stories. I just post whenever I want because uh, people like my voice. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I mean, if you like it, if you don't like, you can find something else. But if you're going to see my page, you're going to find real sex. and You're going to find what I find hot, which is not necessarily the work that I do. <laughs> What's your point? So, yeah. And for those of you watching, it's R O C K Y V A L L A R T A. You got it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and your link tree on your Twitter, that link is yeah. right? It's also on Instagram. Yeah, I'm on Instagram. I forgot. Um, my link tree has all of that. It also has my appearances on other podcasts, and I will post yours as soon as, uh, as, soon as it's okay. listed. I will post the link on it. Um, I am more opinionated than I should, <laughs> but I am very well intended and I'm willing to have like an open conversation about any topic. So like, if you guys want to talk or whatever, uh, hit me up and I have no trouble like talking to people. Yeah. That's something that's becoming more and more rare though, is people who are just willing to engage in that conversation, even if they disagree with someone. Now everyone, it's like, us versus them and yelling yeah. and screaming and fuck you. And I'm just like, yeah, we need to know. But like, here's the thing that um, we all got to understand the people that are really vocal are just a small group. And actually the people that are more open aren't talking because the annoying people are way too loud. But um, like, honestly, uh, we need to stop shaming people for saying things, even if they're stupid. If somebody says something really dumb, just go ahead and ask them why maybe they will explain why and maybe then if it's justified you'll be like oh now i understand why you're such a dick then maybe you can expose them to a different thoughts and ideas because sometimes people don't know that they don't know and that's okay but if you go and tell them oh you're a fucking dumbass they're not even going to follow through with a conversation with you like yeah. sorry that's not the way to approach people just be like oh why why do you think this is this particular thing you, you, I, and thank you for thank you for uh, accepting to uh, <laughs> to do the to do this with me, because um, uh, I like talking to people, and I'm glad that like you're doing something where like you talk to porn actors and you see that it's not just like sex hungry people that are just like uh, fucking all day and doing drugs and uh, getting pimped or pimping. No, like it's it's a job where people where like we have thoughts. Sex is not the only thing on my mind, and. Uh, People should know that too. Like, uh, like you're studying. What are you doing, business? Yeah, master's of business administration. Yeah, how do you like it? I like it. Most of my professors have been really good. There's a couple that have been like, "Fuck my life." Wow. No, I admire your patience for school. I like. I hated school since I was a kid, and I just couldn't wait to get out. <laughs> no, no, school's not for everyone. But yeah. yeah. You take the good with the bad, right? What? I said you take the good with the bad. Yeah, yeah. Like you can never know too much. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but thank you so much. Um, we're we're closing the the interview, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, it's been an honor to talk to you. <laughs> your, your eyes are so yeah. blue. I'm sorry. I just keep staring at them. <laughs> and I, I hope I get to meet you um, next time I go to the states. 
Hey guys, just wanted to say thank you for watching this video, and if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button, and on the left-hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord, and I personally answer that it is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos, the porn star confessions, the dom sub, all that stuff, it is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.